of you that side dress, this is a much more familiar scene than having the wide drop hoses right next to the stock. As you can see here, we have the Coulter bar and it's put a 15 inch center of nitrogen two and a half inches deep. We did this for years. And by far the advantage is over once and done nitrogen is the split applied nitrogen. It gives us a great advantage as nature gives us increased rainfall. But at the same time, over the last three years as we've checked wide drop and the timing and positioning of it next to the stalk, we've seen a five bushel advantage. And we were asking ourselves, where does that five bushel come from? We went to Dr. Mulvaney at the University of Illinois and he created some nitrogen 15 or N15, which is traceable N. This N can be traced at any position once it's applied, whether it's in the soil or actually in the root or up in the plant or even in the ear. So last year we did three replications in a field with N15 at V8 corn. So corn that's about this tall, up to your waist. That corn field had 100 pounds of nitrogen applied pre-plant. We then come in of wide drop on each side of the row versus wide drop every other row, and then a coulter with 100 pounds at side dress. We follow that through the growing season. And at any given time, you can take a plant and send it into the lab, and they can grind that plant up and find exactly where is the nitrogen and how much. Interesting. It quickly become evident where the five bushel come from. The Y drop on both sides of the row took up 25% more nitrogen than in this slot put in at V8 in moisture. So nitrogen on top next to the row, 25% more uptake than where the nitrogen stays in the center of this row. Every other Y drop was 11% more, every other row Y drop than in the center of the row. So as farmers, we can say more uptake definitely more yield. And so we were able to take that plant at 31% when it reached black layer. We took the ears off, sent those to the lab, they ground the ears, they looked at the whole plant, and then they looked at the soil at the different amounts of N that was available through that growing season. My name is Kelsey. Um, I'm a master's student at the University of Illinois. I'm in my first year here and I'm studying soil chemistry. I'm Richard and I've been here for more years than I want to think about, um, but I work in soil fertility and soil chemistry. So we're, we're measuring uptake efficiency using a technology called N15, which is just a heavy stable, stable isotope of nitrogen. Um, it, it's basically a tracer and we can use it to uh, see where the fertilizer goes into the plant and into the soil. The goal of the N15 study is to estimate crop uptake efficiency and to use that to identify treatments and procedures that are more efficient for increasing crop uptake. That's the fundamental goal of our work. If we can put more nitrogen in the crop, there's less being lost and less having a bad effect on the soil itself. So the, the isotope can be labeled in the fertilizer. It can be applied in, in different forms that you, you may apply as, as a producer. Um, and then as we, we apply it just like um, a conventional farmer would, and then we're able to uh, measure that later using uh, technology that we have here in the lab. So in nature, there's, um, there is N15, but it's at um, relatively constant states. It's about 0.3663 atom percent. Um, we can use that number and um, see how much we applied and then back calculate and see how much got into the plant. So it, it works by masses. If you bend an object, um, the, the mass of it will um, affect how much it bends, and we're able to, to use that to measure how much N15 is in a particular sample. N15 is an isotope of nitrogen. My hypothesis is just to find out how efficient um, certain treatments are. So obviously there's, there's some things that affect efficiency, how close you get it to the plant, timing, those things, and those are what we're looking at. Um, we have our plots set out and uh, we have planted and applied um, applications. We have some side dress applications and we also had some pre-plant applications. So obviously the pre-plant applications are done and the side dress applications were done at V9 and those are also done. 
So right now we're waiting for harvest to get plant samples so that we can measure and see how much N15 is in the plants. We begin the analyses by uh, digesting the sample material with sulfuric acid and converting all the nitrogen in those samples to ammonium sulfate. And then the ammonium sulfate is separated from other constituents in the digest by a process called diffusion. And finally, uh, we end up with that ammonium sulfate transferred into microplates for processing by the system behind us. And that's the one that analyzes N15 content. And from that output, we can determine how much of the fertilizer was taken up in the corn. So the, the instrument behind Kelsey and me is the mass spectrometer that's used for N15 analysis. It's fully automated. It can run 24-7 if there are no breakdowns. And it processes lots of samples. This is essentially a factory process for N15. Now I might mention this is the only instrument of its kind in the world that does this particular process. So it begins with microplates containing ammonium sulfate samples. The instrument has a, a reaction head that comes down on the microplate moved by the plotter. The reaction head makes a gas tight seal and it purges the air from the well in the microplate because air is 78% N2. We're going to be making N2 from ammonium. So once the air is purged, and that's done with nitrous oxide, then the system adds a small amount, three drops, of a reagent called hypobromide, which oxidizes ammonium N to N2 gas. The N2 is taken into a vacuum manifold, the pressure is measured, there's a liquid nitrogen trap to remove N2O, and then the N2 is sent to the mass spectrometer over here, and that's the part that measures the masses. So we have two isotopes, N14 and N15. That gives us three masses of N2, 28, 29, and 30. The mass spec separates those three ion beams, and it measures a ratio of the beams to calculate N15 content. The difference between N14 and N15 is one extra neutron. And that changes the mass, which um, makes it able for us to, to measure the difference between the two. All run by virtue of an IBM PC from the 1980s that uh, has no hard drive, runs at a blistering four megahertz processor, but is extremely reliable, and that's what matters for this operation. I, so so we, we know how much N15 we put in the fertilizer. Um, we, we made the fertilizer here in the lab or diluted it, and we apply that. We know how much is in the soil. We can measure that, and then we know how much is in the end plant. So from that, you can calculate, basic, for lack of a better word, the difference between the two and see how much was gained in the plant. But really what it boils down to is that the plants that end up with a higher percentage of N15 took in more fertilizer and the efficiency is higher. And so that's what we're really looking for comparing different treatments like fall applied versus side dress and so forth. Yeah, so there were three treatments involved in last year's study. Um, it was basically a, a placement study is what, what it was um, to simulate the Y drop. So one of the uh, treatments was uh, double row on both sides, so a regular Y drop simulation. The second was just on one side, and the third was a Coulter treatment, um, so just in the middle of the row. And uh, the data were pretty clear. Uh, the closer you get the nitrogen to the plant, the more it's going to take up. We have lots of different treatments. Um, we have the Y drop in, in the experiment, but we also have other uh, applications 
that um, a lot of producers use. So we have a 200 pound broadcast application. We have um, quite a few side dress applications. Um, with addition to the Y drop, we're going to be able to compare all of those. Yeah, so we have three sites. Um, two of them are on mollusols, which are more rich um, in supplying soils. And then we have one alpha sol. Um, so three sites, and at each of those sites, we have all the treatments. Um, we have 12 treatments now. Yes, 12 treatments. And each of those have triplicates at each site. So we've been working really closely with Tim Smith at CropSmith, and he has been a huge help to us. The project would not be where it's at without him. Um, one of the, the issues with N15 studies is N15 is relatively expensive. And because of that, the plot sizes are very small. And it's hard to do uh, simulated applications for how a conventional farmer would do it. Um, and Tim has been able to achieve that for us, um, which we would not have been able to achieve that. So. So um, we have quite a few plots that we're looking at, but um, obviously we want to get some thorough data and we definitely will, for sure. So.